Well, now sort of the second part of honoring Joe and honoring uh, the great Bill Peterson and the great Bob Luddy. We're going to uh, celebrate the establishment of the Peterson Luddy Chair in Austrian Economics and uh, Bill Peterson and Bob Luddy and of course Joe Salerno, three great men. Uh, I'm privileged to read today the remarks that Laura Bennett Peterson, Bill's daughter, an economist, a writer, uh, an attorney in Washington, D.C., has sent uh, to honor this occasion. Um, she says, all of us ask from time to time who and what we will leave behind. What is to us this quintessence of dust, as Shakespeare put it in Hamlet? Dad was deeply honored when this institute conferred upon him the Gary G. Slarbaum Prize for Lifetime Defense of Liberty a decade ago. He would be in cloud nine to learn of the Peterson Luddy Chair in Austrian Economics that Bob Luddy and the Mises Institute have created in his honor. Dad, like his great teacher, colleague, friend, and role model, Ludwig von Mises, believed in and espoused the power of principles. Chief among these principles, for both Mises and Dad, were the ability and the freedom of individuals to reason and to choose, and the efficiency, efficacy, and democracy of free markets under limited non-interventionist government. As Dad wrote in the op-ed in the Wall Street Journal when Mises died, while man could destroy himself and civilization, he could also ascend in a free society and a free economy to undreamed of cultural, intellectual, and technological heights. In any event, thought would be decisive. These principles did not come to death from mainstream economics, but from the rethinking of mainstream economics that Mises inspired. Just as his first meeting with Mises in 1950 marked an intellectual turning point, another meeting 40 years later marked a personal turning point. Dad met Bob Luddy about in, around in, in 1990 at Campbell University where Dad held a chair. Dad developed the highest regard for Bob as an inventor, entrepreneur, and great and good human being. Bob became not just the best friend Dad ever had, but in effect, another son. I can think of only one thing that might have threatened, if only temporarily, their friendship if either had praised an op-ed by Paul Krugman in the New York Times. Dad would be thrilled to learn that Joe Salerno, a prolific and thoughtful scholar and dedicated teacher, will be the first to hold the Peterson bloody chair. What Chaucer said of the clerk of Oxford in the general prologue to the Canterbury Tales could equally said of Joe and Dad, and gladly would he learn and gladly teach. In The Entrepreneur, Real and Imagined, an article that I admire and that Dad doubtless admired too, Joe identifies and assesses the different approaches to entrepreneurship of Mises, Rothbard, Kersner, and Mises, including Menger and Bamba Verk. An entrepreneur like Bob Luddy would not, in Mises' view, be just a manager, but an individual with the ability, vision, and venturesomeness, venturesomeness to risk the capital he owns to create new and improved products, services, or processes. I'm grateful to Bob and to the Mises Institute for this living memorial to Dad and to the principles for which he fought. As Percy Bysshe Shelley said in Adonais, an essay on the death of John Keats, Ages, empires, and religions lie buried in the ravage they have wrought. For such as he can lend, they borrow not glory from those who made the world their prey. And he has gathered to the kings of thought who wage contention with their time's delay. And of the past are all that cannot pass away. So Dr. Bill Peterson, great champion of capitalism, great teacher of freedom, great teacher of Austrian economics, colleague of Mises at NYU, I mean, we could, uh, and Joe is gonna talk more about him. Mr. Bob Luddy, who I'm now gonna call upon, a great benefactor of the Mises Institute, as indeed Bill Peterson, a great benefactor of the Mises Institute. Uh, great entrepreneur, great man, as uh, Laura Peterson pointed out, a member of our board. We're very honored to have him as a member of our board. And uh, Bob, come on up and talk about this chair. Thank you very much, uh, Lou. It's a great honor to be with you here today. Thomas Cahill wrote a book, How 
the Irish saved civilization from the Huns and the barbarians uh, from the time after uh, uh, the fall of the Roman Empire until the Middle Ages. Well, Judge uh, John Denson in his book, Century of Wars, uh, reminds us that the barbarians were back in full scale in the 20th century, killing uh, literally tens of millions of people over these ideas of socialism, communism, and fascism. Thankfully, the 20th century was also the time of Mises. And throughout his entire lifetime, Mises had these magnificent theories and ideas of how the world should operate economically, but they were never accepted. And Mises was never accepted in the world. He was never given the recognition or praise that he should be. And eventually he dies uh, in the mid 70s. But thankfully, uh, Lou Rockwell and his associates uh, formed the Mises Institute. Uh, so if the Irish were the precursor to the Mises Institute, uh, they're the, the Mises Institute is essentially the modern day monastery, which contains uh, the vast knowledge of the uh, Austrian economists, but not only contains it, but expands it. And thankfully to the web is able to publish it throughout the entire world. Uh, so the Mises Institute is a very important to our civilization, to our way of life, and to the opportunity for millions of people who will come after us. Uh, Dr. Peterson thought his greatest luck in the world was to meet Mises uh, um, serendipitously going to night school at NYU. He later became uh, a colleague of Mises. He was devoted to Austrian economics. And I would say equally uh, that Peterson was the best friend that I ever had. And it was, it was a natural, good professional relationship, the economist and the entrepreneur, the theorist and the actor. And so we were able to work together over 20 years. He was very engaged with business. Peterson was the consummate teacher. And he knew it, and he knew it so well because he was a student of Mises. He was there at the beginning and through the seminars of Mises. He loved business. He loved people. He loved free choice, civilization. And so it's, it's a great honor to be part of the Mises Institute, the, Luddy, the Peterson Luddy Chair. And Dr. Peterson would have been more than delighted to have Joe Salerno as the first holder of the chair, and as am I. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It's a great honor to have you. So it's, it's uh, my honor to present you with this uh, plaque from the Mises Institute, Professor Joseph Salerno, the inaugural holder of the Peterson Luddy Chair in Austrian Economics. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Again. We hold it up in the Uh, I'm, I'm greatly honored to be, to be the uh, first first economist uh, appointed to the Peterson Luddy Chair in Austrian Economics. First, I, I want to express my deepest gratitude to Bob Luddy for his generosity in, in endowing the chair. In addition to being an outstanding entrepreneur, Bob is a dedicated advocate of liberty and, and a free economy, was a superb understanding of Austrian economics. I spoke to him on a number of occasions, most recently last night, um, someone who has a deep a uh, feeling f um, for, the, for the free society and who himself acts to bring that about. And that's, uh, w w entrepreneurs, if there's a shortage of anything or scarcity of anything that entrepreneurs have, it's time. And um, Bob devotes his time to, to causes outside his business, causes that advance the, 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 um, 
the free society. I would also like to say a few words about William Peterson. Um, it was easy to tell that Bill was a PhD student of Ludwig von Mises, because Mises' passion, courage, and what some people called intransigence in defense of a free society was always reflected in Bill's works. Uh, I first encountered, Bill, uh, first encountered Bill's work as a junior in college when I first subscribed to the old fee publication, The Freeman. I was struck by how clearly Bill wrote about economics and how expertly uh, he applied it to the issues of the day. I probably read every article he wrote in The Freeman. Uh, and I, la I later reread re many of those articles after I became a professor uh, for guidance in, in preparing lectures and, and, and getting lessons across to students. Uh, little did I know at the time, because I had not yet met him, that Bill was a prominent applied economist who held prestigious positions as economist and assistant to the chairman of the Finance Committee of the United States Steel Corporation. I mean, he was moving in really high circles. He, he also was, was a consultant to firms such as General Electric, General Motors, Union Carbide, and manufacturers Hanover Trust. So, you know, who says that Austrian eco economists are, are only armchair economists? This was a man who was in the real world with his hands in the muck, so to speak, um, using uh, principles of Austrian economics. So I first met him, unfortunately uh, detrimental to me, um, I didn't meet him earlier, but in the 1990s at an event uh, um, at, at the Mises Institute. Uh, after I gave the lecture, I, I came down from the podium and I noticed a, a man who was distinctly patrician looking, gl just gliding toward me through the crowd. And I didn't really know who it was, but he confronted me, looked me right in the eye, and, and he says, you know, I'm Bill Peterson, and I, I follow your work. I followed your work. I, I, I like what you write. Um, you, you, you're a true follower of Mises. And I'll always cherish that moment, meeting him for the first time. So um, I'm, really, I'm really proud to be the holder of a chair that bears the name of William Peterson and Robert Luddy. Thank you very much.